Welcome back to our second week of making Paul Clay inspired castles. And just as a review, let's remember what Paul Clay's artistic style was. So he was a painter that used really bright, bold colors and lots of shapes to make patterns. And these patterns were made out of these repeating geometric shapes. So like rectangles set next to each other side by side or circles or triangles. And then he could use those repeating shapes to make things like buildings or in our case, a castle. So then we want to remember what a castle is and what a castle looks like. So we can use these shapes that we cut out to create our own version of a castle. So let's review what a castle actually is. And we know that a castle is different than a regular house because it's built in a fortified way or a strong way, like with big stone walls and protective features like a drawbridge that goes up and down, usually over a moat, which is a water feature surrounding the castle. And these are all ways to keep the people inside safe with these big towers and battlements that are built really high and these cool bridge features that make it hard to get into the castle if they were under attack. And if we look now to Paul Clay art, we can see those geometric shapes being used to create buildings like a castle, and we can pay closer attention to the shapes and the ways that he put those shapes together to create that art. Here are all of the cut pieces from last week organized by shape. I have my circles over here, some squares, some long rectangles and short rectangles, my triangles, and then these are all kind of the random shapes from just snipping the scraps of paper that I had. And then I made a swirl um, just to have a bunch of different options. And remember from last week I said, make sure you have quite a few of each shape. Um, and if you don't and you find yourself making your castle and you wish you had more squares, you can always take a rectangle and cut it up into squares. You can always take one of your circles if it's too big and you can make it smaller. So definitely have a pair of scissors nearby. Make sure you have your glue stick. And then remember that we need a piece of masterpiece paper. So that's gonna be thicker than printer paper if you have access to that. Um, Cause we're gonna be gluing all these papers onto that and you don't want it to be too flimsy and floppy when it gets those papers on there. So go ahead, collect your supplies, cut anything else up that you think you might need at this point. And then when you're ready, we will start making our castles. So now that I've had a chance to study the Paul Clay Castle and Sun painting, I am going to start to organize my pieces and figure out how I can use them to make my own castle and sun. And the most important thing is to remember that the thicker and bigger pieces, you're gonna wanna put down first because we're gonna be layering shapes on top of each other. So for example, if you put a small piece down first, and then you put a big piece on down after, then it would cover it up. So we wanna have the bigger pieces on first so that when we begin to layer our smaller pieces, they are on top and you can see them. And I'm just gonna put a few of these down so you can get an idea. And then I'm gonna skip ahead to fast mode so that you can see how I'm gonna be gluing it. So the way that the Paul Clay um, painting looks is he has rectangles and squares making up the foundation of the castle. And then there's some triangles on top. There's some triangles also inside, smaller triangles inside the rectangles. So if you have any smaller triangles, you can start to put them in and create these little squares because you might know that two triangles put together at a diagonal can make a square. So this is how I'm gonna to start to organize my page, but I encourage you to get a little bit messy 
with how you glue. And by messy, I don't mean like off the page, but it doesn't have to be perfectly aligned inside the shapes. So for example, this piece doesn't necessarily fit here. It does fit here, but that might be like too perfect almost. So maybe you could layer it so that it's off center a bit. It make it a little more interesting. And even putting these smaller pieces connected to bigger pieces. I have a couple of these interesting shapes here. Maybe I'll use a yellow one because that's green. And that looks like the castle entrance. Some of those tunnels really start to make it look like a castle. And just continuing to layer. And like I said, you'll start to get an idea of how it's gonna look as you put more pieces on the page. And we don't wanna forget our sun. So you wanna get the sun down. Maybe I'll put that here. You wanna get the sun. I like to kind of play around. Maybe my sun's gonna have three different parts to it. Doesn't have to be exactly how you might picture a sun as a yellow or orange circle. Doesn't even have to be a circle if you don't want it to be. So for now, I'm gonna leave it like that. I might change it. Everything can be subject to change. <laughs> So just continue adding your pieces and then you might say to yourself, but should I start gluing now? I like to get the foundation of it done and just see how it's gonna start to take shape before I start gluing because then you can kind of see what pieces are left over at the end and if there's anything you really wanna use because again, you're never gonna be able to fit all of these on your page. It might start to take up too much space and then you won't be able to see the geometry, the actual shapes of what you're picking. So you don't wanna add so much that it just becomes one block of color. You wanna still be able to see the outlines of the shapes. So I'm just gonna keep adding and eventually you'll get to a place where you say, okay, I'm ready to glue. And then after you glue and you have it all finished, you might wanna add a couple things here and there. So I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna switch to fast mode and then you can see how I get to my finished product. finished product, I'll notice places that still need to get more glue on them and I can continue gluing those down. Even after it dries, you might see some corners that pop up and you might have to do another round of gluing. But basically, you'll see that my castle has taken shape. I have my sun. I made some decisions while I was making it that I didn't want to use certain pieces because I wanted to use other ones more and you have to select the ones that are gonna be in your final product and then just let go of the rest. <laughs> if you want, you can make another one with your leftover pieces if you have a lot more and you could even put those two together. Up to you, just another idea. So it's not gonna look exactly like the Paul Clay painting, of course, because we're collaging. We're using paper and cutting it into pieces and putting it back together in new and unique ways. So your collage is gonna look very different than a painting, which is more two-dimensional. This one has more texture, but you'll see that the geometry and the shapes definitely stand out. It's cool when you have contrasts, like the origami paper. I even found some of my daughter's glitter paper and cut up some of that. And some of these other interesting shapes, like the spiral, maybe that's a tree growing out of one of the rooftops. You know, so let your imagination guide you on this. I want you to have freedom in your masterpiece. And when you're done, please take a picture or turn in your final project to your teacher. And when you get it back, be sure to frame it and display it for everybody to see your hard work. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. Can't wait to see you next week. <laughs>